wanted to start this video off a little bit differently because I knew the John Deere 332 is a running tractor. I went up to the tractor after it's been sitting for five months in this warm shop and I turned over the key once, all the dash lights turned on and I turned it over into the start position and the engine didn't want to turn over. So I probably have a dead battery in this tractor and I'm lucky I figured that out now. Right after that, I took out my muscles and I pushed this little tractor into the corner of the shop so I can work on it. And I'm gonna tell you something, even though this John Deere 300 series tractor looks very small, it's not an easy push. So you're gonna need probably all your power to push this tractor if you ever need to. In today's video, I'm gonna be removing most of the green panels you can see on this tractor so I have access to everything around the engine. And then I'll work my way to the back and remove the rear fender so I have access to the rear end and everything underneath the steering column. I managed to remove the front grille and the hood. Now I have access to the top end of the engine so I could access the valve cover, the injectors, or even the air filter and just service it from the top. In front of the engine, we also have the battery. Uh, that's how it's laid out in this machine. And uh, the battery didn't want to power the engine before or at least turn over the starter motor. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure how good this battery is. So I'm gonna take a multimeter and we're gonna check it real quick. We're gonna put it on DC. We're gonna put it right here positive to positive and negative to negative. And we have a reading of 12.19 or 12.2, very roughly. Um, so that actually measures pretty good, or at least in my opinion, I've seen worse batteries out there that have started over an engine. So I'm actually leaning towards a cable issue. Um, so we have negative, which is ground, and we have positive, which goes to the starter, which also powers the dash and whatnot. And just looking at the positive wires over here, there is a little bit of corrosion on it. And these bolts that are holding onto the battery don't seem very good either. So I'm gonna take this all off. I'm gonna clean up the poles on the battery. And I'm also gonna clean up the cables that distribute power throughout this system. With the battery removed and the side panels off of the machine, I was able to figure out where both wires lead to and I'll share the locations with you right now. So if you're sitting on this tractor, on the right side of this engine, you will notice the positive cable goes underneath of the muffler and you'll notice it on the right side as well. It goes underneath and it goes to the starter. So that's the common side of the starter where we also have more red wires uh, and some orange wires going to the dash or some of the other wiring. So this is the positive side and this also distributes power throughout your machine. So I will be removing this nut on the starter and I'll be cleaning up all of those wires and all of the connectors. Now on the left side of this tractor, you will also see the ground cable. This right here is the ground cable. I will be cleaning up this connector and this goes all the way down to the engine block. You will notice there's a common ground um, from the engine also through this little woven wire which is not insulated to the frame and we also have another little wire um, I believe this is for the rest of the wiring harness so I'm going to be removing this bolt and I'll also be cleaning up all of those connectors I'll be cleaning up those wires later on in this video and I'll put the battery back on this tractor to see if it starts up the way it should but right now I'm also going to remove the seat and then also remove the rear fender so I have access to the rear end of this tractor because I have a good feeling there's a lot of debris under this rear fender pan and also underneath of this tractor. I finally got the rear fender pan off the John Deere 332 and it's over there on the ground. It was actually much heavier than I initially expected. The John Deere 317 fender pan or the John Deere 300 fender pan was not that heavy. So this must be thicker sheet metal. 
and there must be a little bit more metal on that for some reason. But yeah, it was much heavier and underneath of the fender pan, you will see in just a second how dirty it actually is. If you never remove your rear fender pan on a John Deere garden tractor, this is how it will look like. You will have a lot of debris on the top of this mat. You'll have a lot of debris on your fuel tank, especially if you're mowing lawns or doing some work outside in the dirt. So this is how it will look like. And obviously you wanna take this off so your engine will be cooled properly because the air gets drawn through the instrument panel either from the side or even from the front. Now underneath of this mat, I'm gonna open it up for the first time and we'll have a look underneath. Yeah, it's pretty dirty down there as well. Oh, off to the right, there's a lot of debris. Right down in there, there's probably two inches of grass. Uh, luckily, there's nothing around the input shaft of the hydraulic motor or even some of these hydraulic lines that are going into the valve block. So I'm pretty happy about that, but this must be cleaned up. Right now, I'm gonna get a vacuum cleaner and clean everything above the frame rail so all this on the top end will look much better. And then I'm gonna go underneath of the tractor and there is a mesh screen. I'm gonna be removing that and you probably wanna stay tuned for that because I have a good feeling there's a lot of debris underneath of this tractor. I was vacuuming for just a couple minutes and it already looks 10 times better on this rear end. The fuel tank looks much cleaner and even that mesh up front is much better as well. I'm going to clean this with soapy water a little bit later, but before I do that, I'm gonna go underneath and remove that mesh screen. That way, the debris that's underneath doesn't get wet and it'll be much easier to clean. Did you guys see how much debris was underneath of this mesh screen in between the frame rails of the John Deere 332? It's just crazy, look how much that it was. There was also probably a mouse nest right there and that's another reason why there was so much grass collected in between the frame rails. But I'm gonna have to clean everything out a little bit better before I soak this down with some soapy water. So I'm gonna use some compressed air and the vacuum cleaner once more before I do that. But make sure you guys at home do the same thing, uh, especially before the cutting season. You wanna remove all the old grime so your engine and your rear differential can cool properly. And that's another reason why maybe some of your oil temperatures will be a little bit higher during summertime because there's a lot of debris or a lot of gunk around your mechanical components. I blew out everything between the John Deere 332 frame rails. Now I can see most of the mechanical components. So I'll give you guys a view underneath of this tractor and I'll also share with you guys some damage that I found. I have a work light set up underneath of the John Deere 332. And as you can tell, this is the hydraulic line pickup that goes into the hydraulic motor. It gets filtered before it goes into the motor. And you'll notice this hydraulic line is actually cut on this side. And there's also a little bubble right there on the hose. So I'm going to be replacing this hose very soon. Uh, before I remove it, I wanna clean everything with soapy water. So that down there will be cleaned up and the top will be cleaned up. On the John Deere 317 and 300 that I fixed, there's actually a hard line in this area. So I'm not exactly sure if this is original or not, but if this does the job, I'm gonna replace it with a similar hose. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna replace is this hydraulic filter. You'll notice it's probably pretty old. Nobody ever changed this or maybe in the recent years. So I'm gonna go ahead and also change out this filter if I'm already draining the hydraulic fluid from this rear end. While the hydraulic oil is draining, I'll get to those battery cables I was talking about before. I usually clean them up with a brass brush, Scotch-Brite, and some emery cloth. After that, I grab my multimeter and set it to the ohm setting to check for resistance. 
The multimeter tests good, and now let's see how the wires are. Just as good. Now I'm going to clean the wires on the tractor the exact same way, so I have proper ground and 12 volts to the starter. Oh yeah, and I can't forget about that bent bracket underneath of the tractor. Let me straighten that out real quick. It's the next day over here in the shop and I got two brand new filters for the John Deere 332. One is the engine oil filter and the other one is the hydraulic filter for the rear end. And I also have exactly two brand new hoses and I'll share everything with you guys over here on this table. This table is looking a little bit messy, but I think it'll do just fine. Off to the right, we have the old filters. This is the hydraulic filter, AM39653. And the oil filter for the engine is M806418. So I cross-referenced these numbers from John Deere and I purchased Wix filters. I usually purchase these because I think the quality is pretty good. And uh, this is the closest product I can find uh, to me. John Deere is a little bit further away, so I just go to an automotive store and pick up these filters. So this is the cross-reference number for the engine oil filter, and this is the hydraulic filter cross-reference. And you can see they are exactly identical, so this will do just fine. Now over here on the hoses, you will see the pickup hose for the hydraulic motor uh, was damaged. I already pulled that off the machine. It is uh, obviously cut on two ends. Uh, even though it wasn't leaking, I just wanted to replace it. The ID is three quarters of an inch and it is exactly one foot long. So I picked up a brand new hose and this should do the trick. And uh, if you want to see the tag, that right there is the tag, three quarters of an inch ID. Now the other hose I picked up was actually the sight tube that's actually in the back of the tractor. Uh, the original one that was on there was not see-through and I think it would be nice to have a see-through one just so you know your oil level in the back. So I picked up a quarter inch ID clear hose and this is the tag for the quarter inch ID. I got 10 feet of it but it is a quarter inch ID and it's good for liquids, chemicals and gases so this should be just fine for the rear end. Since I have brand new hoses and filters I can install them onto the John Deere 332 and I'll do that right now. I finished up with the rear end of this tractor and now we can fully focus on the front end. Before I mount the engine oil filter onto this Yamaha three cylinder diesel engine, I'll share with you guys the drain plug because it has a special seal on it. This right here is the old drain plug. As you can see the mating surface and the threads are still in great condition so I can reuse this drain plug. Now they also had this seal slash washer on the drain plug. Uh, the inner side is rubber and the outside is metal and it's basically just a washer. Now the bottom surface is really wavy and the other side also has an indentation from the oil drain plug, so I probably won't reuse this. Now, I don't have one of these on hand, but I do have a kit of aluminum and copper washers. And luckily, I have the size that would fit an M12. And I'm going to be probably using this. Right now, I'm going to install the oil drain plug with the copper washer. And I'm going to add one liter of oil into this engine to see if the oil drain plug leaks, at least on the copper washer. If it doesn't, I'm good to go. And if it does leak, then I have to take it apart and find one of those OEM seals. I filled up this engine with 15W40 diesel engine oil. It's worked for me really well during the colder winter days or even the warm summer days. So if that's something you guys want to use for your John Deere 332, 
it should work just fine. But now, as you guys saw, this engine is really dusty because there is a lot of dust here in Alberta. So I'm gonna clean off this engine with some soapy water and then I'm just gonna blow it off before I start it up. And another thing I wanna do is I wanna actually drain about one liter of coolant because it is only rated at minus 20 degrees Celsius and top it off with a concentrate. It should bring it up to around minus 30 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna do that just before I start this engine up. The battery is now back on the John Deere 332 and the cables and the cable connectors have been cleaned up so hopefully I have enough power throughout this system. In my opinion this tractor is now fully serviced even though the front end has many joints or the rear end still has some brakes and the differential uh, everything works just fine because this tractor only has 700 hours on the clock so I'm really happy with everything else it's a very tight machine so all I can really do right now is fire it up for you guys so you guys can hear the engine and then I'm pretty much done. I actually have to bridge the safety switch in the back because I should be sitting on this seat as I start it up. The safety switch is now installed and now I can start it up. It's already getting pretty smoky inside of the shop, so I shut it off and I'm gonna open the door so I have some fresh air. And that's about it for today's video because I will be putting the panels on off camera uh, because it's basically the way I took it off, it will go back on. After that, I will have a running tractor and in the meantime, I'm actually working on the mower deck. So I will have a mower deck for this John Deere 332 and hopefully that will be done very soon. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. It helps people find this video right here if they're having troubles with their 300 series garden tractor and it also boosts my channel a little bit. If you guys haven't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate it if you do that because I will have more content on John Deere tractors in general and other mechanical components that I'm currently working on. If that's something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button down below. But for now, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in an upcoming video. Peace.